right, well, welcome everyone to day three of our three-day workshop where we have been talking all things, what have we been talking? We've been talking all things client communication. So getting things set up appropriately for client communication so that you can automate where possible the conversation and centralize the conversation. And so today, what we're going to do is talk about traffic. But before we jump into today's topic, let's do a really quick recap of what we've gone over the last two days. So day one, we talked about making a decision between or really understanding the difference between internal communication or channels that you don't necessarily own, don't control versus those internal channels that you do control and making sure that you create a seamless and automated bridge between those channels. And then we talked yesterday about actually automating where possible those channels so that it's pretty effortless uh, done that you can automatically send out emails, text messages, that the conversations that you have that are repetitive, that we are actually doing that on autopilot, so to speak. My goal for you in this workshop is really threefold, is one that you do things on purpose, that things don't happen to you because you haven't thought about it, but that you are actually being intentional about the way that you communicate structure communications, track communications, and automate those repetitive tasks so you don't have to worry about it. And you can focus on your number one task, which is marketing your travel business, and secondly, getting more people out of town. Today, as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about getting traffic. Instead of starting with slides, I'm going to jump right into the workbook that we've been working on this week. And for those of you who have stuck with me, uh, through this week, I will be giving you a link to the workbook at the end of this session so that you have it available. I want to also remind you that if you are interested in utilizing the software that we have been walking through this week or today, you do have an opportunity to register for a 14-day uh excuse me, free trial of Travel Pro Suite. I'm going to go ahead and put the link of that inside of our chat and all you need to do we are doing um uh, right now we are still scheduling i think through uh the end of this week on boarding calls so that we can get you set up and get you on to the account so if you go to this um site it's online travel boss suite success trial, you will get access to uh, get access to the software that we are talking about today. All right, with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, well, you know what, I always ask you guys kind of what was your biggest aha moment from the day before. So tell me, for those of you who joined us yesterday, what was the biggest takeaway that you got away from either Monday or Tuesday? And yesterday, we talked about automation. You'd like to share? Nobody? Nobody's got anything to share? Lindsay, I don't know if you guys can hear me or see me. Sugar. Hey there. Hi. Um, um, I guess my one of my biggest moments was with the with the groups, because being able to have that separate community where people can commune and come together where you know you don't you're not beholden to you know the rules of Facebook or that sort of thing, but also being able to pull those people in and say, okay, now you're in, you know, sugars, you know, travel group, but also have like a separate chat for them, like the people going to Bali, the people going to Dubai. It's like you said, they can see that and think, wait a minute, I didn't sign up for Dubai. That sounds really <laughs> awesome. I can, you know, just that capability, I was like, ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. So that was one of, one of my biggest moments. I really appreciate you sharing that because that private channel feature just got released, I want to say five days ago. And uh, it was actually last week. And the minute it got released, I consolidated. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, like I've been totally waiting for this. 
And so I consolidated our channels and the very use case that you've just described is exactly what we'll be doing as well. So um, I'm glad that, that you saw that. And we actually did a talk about that in the yesterday evening session. If you guys joined us for my weekly office hours training, we went over how to create a community. And um, I'm just really glad that that is helpful helpful to you and that you see a really good use case. I, I just think it's really a powerful tool is to be able to get off of the social media platforms, certainly start with that, um, but get them into your world because I really just sort of love the native communication. And we're exploring that ourselves too. Like one of the things that we, and Sugar, this is for you, one of the things that we just realized too you know, when you do that at everyone in Facebook, it 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 sort of works, right? It sort of lets everybody know because if people have turned off their communications, you may, they may see the post or they may not. Like, you know, we are very much subjected to Facebook's algorithm. Um, and, and to the extent that they've even closed down the live, being able to live stream um, into the group using external software when their native software is not that great. Um, now, when you do a post in our in the community feature that we have, when you do the at everyone, it automatically sends an email to everyone in that community or channel that you've done that you've you've tagged them. I'm like, oh, like because that just saves me another email that we have to write and put into an automation. We just have to do one at everyone. Everyone in the channel will get the communication, will get the email and notification that there is a post that they've been tagged in. Those small little things, right? Like I meet with my admin every, pretty much every other day to confirm the automations that need to go out to talk to her about just sending out the reminders of all the trainings that we're doing. That one little feature just eliminates a conversation with my team, eliminates an email that I need to send out. So Sugar, I hope that you just have a field day <laughs> with your, your destinations and uh, the communications that you intend to set up. So I thank you. I appreciate you sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. All right. With that, I'm going to, unless anyone else would like to share any ahas or major things that they've uh, taken away over this week, we will uh, jump right in into getting traffic. Let me share my screen. So let me move some of these channels around. Okay. So what we're going to talk about today is Really, getting traffic is really twofold ways. So before we jump in into the, the things that you need to consider, you, you got to think about where are you going to get it? Are you going to, there, there's really two ways you can get traffic. You can pay for it or you can get it organically. And in today's conversation, we're going to focus on getting traffic organically and ways and strategies that you can get traffic without paying for Facebook ads. If you've followed me for any period of time, you know how much I love Facebook ads. I do love it because, and I'm going to tell you why I love it. I'm going to tell you why I'm not going to focus on it. Um, I love Facebook ads because if you know what you're doing and you understand the mechanics of the tool, getting in front of your ideal clients is easy peasy. If you have the money and you, you've got the knowledge or you hire the knowledge, getting in front of your ideal client is just a matter of you spending money. And you can get leads from Facebook because your people are there, period, end of story. So when people tell me, oh, Facebook ads don't work, it's 99% of the reason why it doesn't work is because you either one, don't know what you're doing when it comes to building the ad, or you don't have the targeting right, or you're trying to sell you're trying to sell a multiple thousand dollar package to an audience of people that don't know you, which is really a strategy issue. So with all of that being said, years and years of proof, years of years of other businesses that have found success with Facebook ads, Google ads and advertising. But if you, I don't recommend you starting at the gate, out the gate with ads. And let me tell you why, because 99% of the time when you start, same thing happened to me. I didn't have my offers defined. Does that make sense? Like I didn't have how Sunday was going to show up. 
I get a lead and I didn't even really know what to say to them afterwards. I didn't keep the conversation going. So the leads went cold immediately. I was selling too quickly. I was, um, I just didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> like I, I didn't have a funnel set up correctly. So I'm just running random ads. And so again, before you start expending money, because what Facebook will do and really any online advertising company will do is they will spend your money. They will spend the dollars that you allocate. They will run the ads and they don't care that you don't know what you're doing. You don't have a strategy. And so what I want you to do is I want you to spend some time with organic traffic means validating that the offers that you have are viable offers, validating that your funnel is working like you want it. I'm going to give you an example of something that has happened to me on too many times. And I can say, I run an ad and the ad, the link to that's in the ad doesn't work. The link to the landing page, something's wrong with the landing page. It doesn't work. The link to the payment doesn't work. All of these things just burn through cash that we don't want to do. So what using an organic strategy does it one it saves you uh, money two it saves you time three it allows you to validate your process in terms of your marketing the viability of your marketing the response to your marketing and um, it just gives you that opportunity to sort of get a rhythm around the way that you're promoting your trips your offers your services all of the above so I 110,000% recommend that you start with organic traffic building, getting leads through organic means first before you jump straight into ads. Now, if you've got money to burn or you've hired an expert in the ad space, then I say all, uh, be it, that person should get make sure that the whole system is set up so that you can go forward. All right, that's my TED talk and my, my TED speech around paid traffic, organic traffic. Now, the, the, the downside of organic traffic, you know, the upside is it gives you the time to get things straight, but the downside of organic traffic, it takes longer. It takes longer to get that sort of organic engine, you know, revved up and going where it's, it's creating leads for you on a regular basis, that people are seeing you on a regular basis. It takes consistency. And what I say is if it's free, you're probably paying for it in time. It takes time for you to set it up, feed the feed the monkey, so to speak, or feed the engine, give it gas, right? And time for the gas for the for the engine to actually rev up. That being said, we do both. We both we do both organic and we do paid traffic. If I'm gonna give you a recommendation and you're just starting in the business, start with organic strategies first, then move to paid strategies. All right. So with that. That's, you know, the way that you can get traffic paid or organic. We're going to focus today on organic strategies that you can. Now, organic just literally means how, if somebody is looking for you, how do they find you? Now, you can do organic strategies through um, SEO, which is, you know, making sure that you have the right keywords in your website, making sure that you're using um, uh, Google um, to find you. So making sure that your website is indexed correctly um, so that it can re render you in results when somebody is looking for you. A very great organic strategy um, for all travel businesses to get a local listing in Google My Business, right? Now, I will tell you, it is not as easy to do that as it was years ago, but the work that it takes for you to get a listing and prove to Google that you are a business is worth it because immediately locally, you will show up in the search results when somebody is Google, Googling, <laughs> is that a word, Googling? Um, Googling, go, uh, Googling travel advisor, let's say in Atlanta, right? Or travel advisor in Stockbridge. You wanna show up in those local results. So having a Google My Business page really is worth it. At the end of the day, social media is an amazing external channel for you to get traffic from because your people are on one of many of the social media channels, unless they live under a rock and the likelihood of them contacting a travel advisor is probably next to none if they're living under a rock. Your client is on 
one of one, if not many of the channels that are available. So when it comes to developing a social media strategy, you all need to have one. So let me ask you in comments, which social media channels are you guys using? Which ones are you getting are privy to? Which ones are your favorite channels that you want to use? Let me know in comments. Nobody's using any channels. IG, Facebook, TikTok. These are all great. So um, IG and Facebook, good channels. TikTok is a really great channel. If you love to do videos, I would like to get on TikTok. So the, the, the good and bad news of social media channels or social media platforms, I'm not going to spend too much time on like picking a channel because I actually have a course that's dedicated on social media strategies and what you need to do. What I will say is whichever channel you decide, and if you're just starting off, pick one and do it well. Learn the idiosyncrasies, idiosyncrasies of, the, of that channel. Understand what the, the channel's goals are. I'm going to pick on Facebook and YouTube because these are my two primary channels. Facebook's goal, YouTube's goal, frankly, is the same as well, is they want people to stay on the platform. So they reward you for delivering and creating content that keeps people on the platform so and engaging. So the rules and the desires of Facebook versus YouTube, let's say for Facebook, Zuckerberg wants you to create content that people are going to engage with. So the more that you create content that gets likes, shares, comments, the more visible your content's going to be. You need to know that about the channels that you decide to be on. You need to become a steward of that channel because the likelihood of your, your content being visible, particularly if you're on Facebook and Instagram, of being seen without investment of dollars, and I'm speaking solely for Facebook, to be seen on Facebook without paying is and no engaging content is next to nothing. So it doesn't matter how much content you put on the Facebook platform. If no one's liking it, sharing it, or viewing it, well, first of all, you won't be able to be viewed. If no one's liking or sharing or commenting on that post or that content that you're delivering, and you're not paying for it, Facebook is not going to deliver it and let it be seen by people, regardless if they're your friends, if they're on your business page or what have you. That is just the way that the, and, and if you've ever heard of the word algorithm of Facebook, that's the way it is, right? So Facebook rewards highly engaging content. So when it comes to building a content strategy or getting traffic, you've got to know the platform that you're on. So I talked just a little bit about Facebook. Now, YouTube its strategy is all is completely different. They want people to watch videos. They want people to consume videos. So how do you get consumption of videos? You've got to create content that people want to consume. So if you don't know who your audience of people are, then it's probably hard to create content that they're interested in. And so that means you're just throwing stuff on the wall hoping that somebody likes it. So you've got to become a steward of the particular platform that you want to be on before you even start building content. So you even need to know who your client is because you want that client to find you, right? And we're talking organically. So they're not going to, you're not going to force your way into their feed, so to speak, or force their, your way into their life through ads. They've got to naturally be able to find them. And you, unfortunately, if you don't play by the rules of the social media platform, whichever one that is, then your content won't be seen. How many of you guys have done posts and nobody's liked them? Nobody's seen them. Like you look at the views and nobody like it's like it's gone into a vacuum. Right. And that's probably because there's there, there could be several reasons that is. But the first reason I would look to is what is the content that you're delivering? Who is it intended to attract? relate to, connect with, who is it for? 
right? So if you haven't done that work, getting traffic, getting traffic is, is, is a little bit harder on the organic side than when you pay to get in front of that traffic. And hopefully that makes sense because there really is an important distinction that you need to know. If you're going to have an organic strategy, you got to pick a platform. You need to know what the goals of the platform are. You need to abide by it. And you really need to create content that is going to speak to your ideal client so that they'll watch it, they'll find it, they'll be searching for it, and you'll come up in the results, okay? What I will tell you for those people who are video shy, video's where it's at. Like I, I, I you know, five, five, six years ago when I was, when I started doing, I guess more than that now, but when I started doing training, I used to say video is sort of optional. Like you don't have to do video. And I'm like, if you're doing organic, um, if you're doing organic, you know, trying to get in front of organic and you're not doing video, then you, you got to do SEO. Like, the, like those are your two items. If you do not want to invest money in ads and you don't invest money in an SEO strategy, meaning, uh, you know, keywords that are on your website that are, your, your website is designed to be discovered and you're not doing video again, you're just making it harder for you to be discovered. So this is not a marketing for your travel business and frankly, any business. You could take travel out of the equation and say any business. Marketing a business without some investment of time and money is a losing game, particularly now because the competition is so high. So it's not even that you're competing with other travel advisors. You're competing with everybody who's online, right? You look at your newsfeed and you see how many people are advertising in, in the newsfeed. Your goal is to get the attention of your ideal person. So when they're scrolling their newsfeed, they stop right? When they're searching for, you know, best location to go in 2024, they see your, your, your video or your blog post comes up, right? Your YouTube channel is surfacing there. So this is what we're going to talk about. That's what number one is. It's really, you need to have a social media strategy. You need to, you need to understand where you're posting to, what that platform is, and then you've got to create content. So that's really number two is you determine the platform, then you've got to create engaging content inside of this um, help doc or this checklist I've created is a training that I did. I did this training last year. I'm just going to open it really quick because this training actually teaches you two things. And it's free when you're a member inside of our travel boss group. All you have to do is go to the learning part and then the, the free training here, chat GPT for travel pros. I'm in love with AI. Like in, you know, what I, I, I can't even, I, I can't even like fake the funk anymore. Like I'm totally in love with AI. And, you know, if, if we all become a Terminator world, I'm probably going to put on my Arnold suit because, and not try to kill them <laughs> because I love AI that much. It is an amazing tool to help you get the mammoth job of marketing done and creating content done in an easy way. So this training, again, is a free AI, um, how to actually, I wrote a couple of prompts that will do two things for you. One, it will teach you how to, find your client, right? Information about your client and then create a content plan for your client based on the types of content that you want to do. Who's excited about that? I've got a lot of great feedback about those who have taken the class. Um, AI is where it's at. So when it comes to building content that's engaging, know who it is that you're building it for. Make sure that the topics are on point relative to travel and then get it scheduled. And so here, what we're going to talk about are where are the traffic sources for you to get it scheduled so that you got people who are consuming it. And the more people that you have consuming your content, the more people you can drop promotions to, the more people that you can sell to. All right. All right. So this is great. Let, let's talk about some options for you. So we just talked about social media strategy. We talked about content. You need a strategy, you need platforms, and you need content. Those are the three things that you need in order to be effective. Now, some of the greatest platforms on earth <laughs> that you can control, at least the content that's on them, we're going to talk about them. So YouTube channel. Every one of you travel advisors need to have a YouTube channel. And you're like, really? I need to have a YouTube? Yes, you need to have a YouTube channel, right? Because listen, 
you guys get so much information about destinations, supplier uh, properties and where to go and what not to go. And believe it or not, you are a scholar. And if you're not, you will be soon. You are a scholar of wealth of information in the travel front and everybody loves travel information. And so you need to have a channel for which you can consolidate that information and put it out there to the world. Now, do you have to always be on camera? No, you don't. There's this concept of called a faceless YouTube channel, but do I recommend it? No, I recommend that your face be on the YouTube channel. Why? Because people fall in love with people. People, you know, they generally fall in love with somebody, what they stand for, what they bring to the table and what they're doing. So you are the face of your business. YouTube is a great way to get the name of your business, your expertise out there, creating a channel is where it's at. Now, we're not going to go over in this um, training, actually how to set up and create the YouTube channel. But what I will say is I'm giving you just a little bit of a great tidbit in terms of information here is that there is this concept of an RSS feed, and it's really just a it's a standard way that you can communicate on the internet and provide people um, um, information. So let's just talk about like the suppliers, like the suppliers, like, you know, travel agent at home. And um, what's another magazine I get? Like I get a bunch of like emails and, you know, you see their newsletter and they got all these different articles and they've just got all this information. And most of these companies Potentially, you need to find out. I actually was looking to see if I could find travel RSS feeds so that you could like pull in that information. Well, once you create your YouTube channel, you can actually create an RSS feed for your YouTube channel. I literally just discovered this through a coach that I follow last week. And she revealed this little bit of tidbit. And I'm sharing it with you because this is how powerful it is. You once you create your channel. All that you need to do, and I'm going to actually show you on my YouTube channel so you can, um, give me a second, let me get my YouTube channel up. So here is our YouTube channel. And so I'm going to go to my channel in YouTube. So when you go to view your channel, What is going to come up? I'm going to take this down so I can see. Move, your, move the chat out of the way. Okay, so when you view your channel, there's this ID that's going to populate. Did I not? Maybe I'm not able to see my channel because I'm also live on my channel, but that shouldn't prevent anything. Let's do it again. Um, oops, I'm in the right place. Let's try that one more time. Oh, my channel is right here. Okay, here's my channel. Bring it over here. And then I want to show you that there's a little ID in your channel. This is a custom channel, like this is a custom URL, and that's because I, I've, I've got enough people in my channel. But when you, let me see if I can find the ID. There's a little ID in your channel, and what you want to do is you want to grab that ID, and when you grab that ID for your channel, I'm also live on my channel, so I think that's what's causing me a little bit of problems. Let's go to settings. It's probably in settings too. It's the beauty of doing things live. You get to 
All right, so when you go to your account, let me see, I go to an advanced settings right here. This is your channel ID. So I went to advanced settings. That's because my, my channel ID is not visible, but you want to copy that channel ID and then you want to put it in this value right here. And what that's going to do is it's going to give you an RSS feed for your channel. What's great about our tool, I'm going to show you actually how we can take that RSS feed and then we can create a an automatic email. So let's just say I put my channel ID right there. So now this is the RSS feed for my channel. Why this is powerful is because in our tool, we can automate the sending of an email to notify somebody when we've added a new video. We can automate a social media post when we add a new video to that channel. That post will automatically go out to our platforms of choice. So let me show you exactly how that works. And what I will tell you is every opportunity that you can do to automate little communications the better your life is, right? So now you add a, you do a video, you go live, you add a video to a particular channel, then all you have to do is just go live or, you know, add the video, upload the video, and then you're done. So that is really kind of one of the best things, like, like the best aha moments. Cause I'm like, again, another thing that we do, there's a whole bunch of man hours and time that we spend communicating to our community to let them know about the replay. So now once we get this set up, it'll automatically happen. The replays will go out or, you know, a notification to our community will go out to let people know. And I'm talking about like the community on my email list, people who are on my business page, those social media posts will automatically go out. All right. So let me show you really quick how you can set up this RSS feed for an um, social media post. So I'm going to go to marketing and then in social in our social scheduler. So in our platform, we have the ability for you to connect your social media accounts. And I think we talked about that on Monday because you're having conversations with these people, right? So we want you, we have nine different social media platforms that we connect to. But one of the things that you can do is you can create a new post and then you can create an RSS post. And what that RSS post is going to do is it'll automatically, I hold on, I didn't copy the whole um, URL. All right, let me copy this whole thing. So this is the RSS feed URL. And then I'm going to select the channel that I wanted to go on. I don't have all the channels that are um, here, but you can see this is the last post. It was a short that was uploaded to my YouTube channel. So now what will happen is this on my business page will automatically post this social media posts to this platform. Now, if I had other channels inside of my account, I'd be able to connect those channels. The other thing that you can do when you set, schedule that social media post is you can say, you can add a call to action, right? So call, you know, reply yes to get more information. Right. And then you can check the feed. So as you're doing YouTube, YouTube posts, let's say, let, you know, I typically do, we do one post, one short a day. I think we do one video every other day, that kind of stuff. You can check it in as many frequencies as you want. So every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes, every hour, you know, whatever, once a day. And then you can determine if you're doing multiple, let's say you load up, you know, 15 videos around Bali, you can load up only five of those will go out automatically in this post. So you can determine how many updates will be made um, for a post. And then all you have to do here after that is create the post. 
And now in the social scheduler, you will see in the RSS part, you will see the feed and it's going to automatically go out. So this one's going to go out. At, it, it, it probably already went out. So this probably went on my site. I'll have to look. I think it takes a couple of minutes for it to actually go live on here. And then let's say you want to just pause it. You can pause it and the RSS feed will not go. I'm gonna keep this paused because this is my demo account and we already actually have one on our live account. So automating the social media post for activity that you're doing on an external site, that to me was like, oh my gosh, that is a wonderful use case and it's a wonderful thing for us to be able to do. So now you can do that here. You've got an RSS feed for YouTube. Another option, Oh, thank you for that. Let me get you the correct link. I'll get you a correct link for that. Let me give you this. The other option that we're going to go over is. All right, so this takes care of YouTube and then creating an uh, RSS feed again. So when we talked yesterday on uh, Monday about you have an external platform. You don't control social media, but you can make sure that they internally get into your system. So what you want to do is you want to automatically post to social media. You want to create a call to action that's going to, when somebody says yes on your post on your business page, you could boost that post. When somebody says yes, that's going to come into your system. That interaction with your Facebook business page post will show up in our account as an interaction because they said yes, that contact will automatically be added to your business account. Like I just love like that whole sort of seamless integration that we can do. So that part, creating a YouTube RSS feed. So creating the, you know, the video on YouTube, it creates the post, somebody replies to the post, it comes in as a contact in your record. The other thing that you can do is create a smart list. And so I'm going to go into contacts and in contacts, smart lists are just in, and, and think of this as um, just think of smart list as category, categorizing your contacts into um, unique groups or lists based on information that's important to you. So, um, we're going to use sugar, sugar as an example. Let's say she does a destination interest form for Bali. Maybe she does a video on how amazing Bali is. And she does a video on that and she posts it to her social media account. And somebody says, yes, I want more information into Bali, right? What would be great is, is for us to know all of those people that are interested in Bali. And so what we can do is as that person comments yes we can create a tag and based on that tag we can then put them in a email smart list that's what an email smart list is so i actually have a bali smart list right here and what it's based on the filter when i look at what the filter is is the tag equals group dash bali now, in our Pillar 2 training, we talk all about like creating groups. And one of the things that you do when you create your group inside of the system is you create a unique tag for the group. And then you want to create a smart list for that group. And so what also becomes really powerful when you create smart lists is this is also the like the technical technical, you know, email marketing term for this is called segmenting. You've now segmented your list into a category that you can run special promotions to special content to you can now, you know, all of the people who are in Bali. Now you can start to talk to them. Right. And talk to them specifically about Bali. How awesome is that? Let's say, you know, yesterday we created a widget, a, a chat widget. And now 
we've got maybe everyone who has responded to that chat widget, we've created a contact tag for them and we create a smart list for them. Smart lists are really a good practice for any advisor to get into as they are getting leads on their list, right? So it doesn't matter where they're coming from. You want to know where people are coming from and you want to capture something specific. So let's say you create a travel guide and it's for Bali, South Africa. It doesn't matter. You want to know that these are all the people that downloaded the travel guide, that this particular travel guide, you want to know all the people that responded to a video that you did. Maybe if it's a special video that's highlighting a particular destination that you know that you're going to sell. Segmentation or categorization of your contacts is real that's your own traffic that's your own group of traffic and you know specifically something unique about them that you can then deliver ongoing content to them or when you're ready to promote you can promote to that specific audience all right so creating a smart list one of the things too i'm going to add um, is as people are coming into your list, general list, one of the things that we, we do for our community as, as they come in, and we actually don't do this for the community yet, but we do it for our Travel Pro Suite members because we release a weekly newsletter just for our Travel Pro Suite. So as people come into the Travel Pro Suite world, we tag them with a note so that we can send a special newsletter just for them. It tells them upcoming training. It tells them the new releases. It tells them a synopsis of all the great training that we've got available for them. And so we create a special tag just for them. And that allows us to send out that automation just for them. So I've got a newsletter tag. Are you guys, are any of you out there doing newsletters? If you are, type in the word newsletter because creating a newsletter in the system is really a great content piece. Using an RSS feed to populate the newsletter is also a great idea. And I'm actually gonna show you that if you guys are interested. If you guys type newsletter and you're interested in seeing how to actually build a newsletter from an RSS feed, I'll actually show you how we're doing it on our side. The other thing that you can do is you've got to create, get in the habit of creating email campaigns or email series. So the first series that anybody gets from us is depending on where they originate. Well, frankly, if you originate in my world, you're going to be entered into one of many different series based on where you originate. And let me give you some ideas and some examples of campaigns and or series that you should be doing. When somebody joins my Facebook group, they immediately, and they provided me their email, they get an email that welcomes them into the Facebook group. And there's a series of emails that go out for that. I think it's like a five or seven day email series that talks about what it means to be a travel advisor, launching operations, all of that marketing, all of that, right? You should have a welcome series when somebody gets onto your list. Whatever that, wherever they originate, if it's from a guide or it's from a discovery call, filling out a request, you should have a welcome series that introduces you, the person of interest and your agency and why you do what you do and how you're going to help them. Whatever the situation is, every product you get from me has a welcome series. Every download you get from me has a welcome series. Pretty much if it's an opt-in, and I am, you are potentially new in my world, there's going to be some sort of email series. We do email series for everything. And when I say the difference between an email and a series is there is multiple touch points that you are going to get from me to let you know, to one, confirm your action, right? Or your purchase. And then I'm going to tell you what the next steps are, whatever that may be. Can you see how powerful that would be in terms of keeping the conversation going when you are marketing your travel business or for that matter, when somebody purchases services or a trip from you, 
we've done it for you. So yesterday I showed you the client booking series that we create for you, right? So when somebody books a trip, we create an email, a set of email series that go out 90, 45, seven day, day of. Those are multiple emails that are constructed that go out at particular times on your behalf based on the action of purchase. Well, you've got a whole other lots of events that are going on in your business that you need to probably continue the conversation. So you really do want to make sure that one, you know where people are coming in and what's the message that you want to send to them as an ongoing. It takes, they say, this is marketing research, seven to nine touch points before somebody buys. Well, I give you, you, you are touched many times when you come into my world. You want to do the same thing when somebody comes into your world. You don't want them to be, you don't want them to go into a black hole that is your business. You don't want them to be like, I wonder where that download was. I wonder who she is. I, you know, you don't want that ever to be the case. You want to have ongoing conversations with people electronically, through video, through your group, whatever that may be. So the conversation is never stopping. But who's got time? to actually be sending out emails every day, all day long. Like somebody comes on my contact list. I don't think about it. I don't even, I don't even, I, we keep track of the metrics, but like I, when I first started on the online space, I was looking at every single person's name. Right. And then I would get bummed out when somebody unsubscribed, I'd be like, Oh my God, I can't believe I'm, I'm a failure. Right. They've unsubscribed to my, like, I don't care if people unsubscribe, the quicker you get off my list, the better it makes room for the people who want to be on my list. That's the same approach that you need to be. This is a numbers game. Your goal is to get the numbers as high as you can in terms of people who know your travel business, know who you are as the person, person of influence so that when you are ready to sell to them, they are familiar with you and they are already in love with the messaging and the information that you provide as an advisor. All right. So we can schedule RSS emails and I'm going to show you how to do that. So thanks for those who said that they'd like to see the newsletter. Um, I prepared to show you my personal account, but let me, let's do it. It's really very slick. So I'm actually going to start with blogs because what we do is we are leveraging the blog site to then create an RSS feed that then we then create the newsletter from. So let me let me show you the output of the newsletter and then I'm going to show you how we build it really quick. Let's see if I've got the time. So I'm really good about getting uh, showing you guys cool, cool techie stuff and not knowing what time it is. <laughs> And then I look up and I'm like, okay, well, I ran out of time. All right, we got plenty of time. All right, so hold on, let me show you. I'm gonna go into my account and I'm gonna show you our actual newsletter. Let me know in comments, how many of you guys are excited about being able to automate like creating a newsletter? I am like tickled pink by, uh, being able to do this. All right, so, okay, so what we've done is we have created, this is our TPS um, newsletter. So this is the newsletter for all the people and you guys get it because we just started it a couple of weeks ago. I just figured out how to, how to render this without us manually having to build this. So what we've done is I'm gonna actually edit the, um, update the email content. And so I think this is as of last week. So we haven't even updated the content that's going out this week. So what we've done is we've got a newsletter. This is our banner that goes out to you. We've got this sort of standard, this uh, stuff that's in brackets. And you're going to see this in a lot of the email templates. You'll see stuff in brackets. What that bracketed information is doing, it's pulling in data from the system. So it's pulling in our contacts names. And so we don't have to build that in. So it's personal. We have a lot of opportunities for you to personalize communication by using fields that are in the system. And so we do, I do this, this personal letter to you all every week. And then we are bringing in kind of what our upcoming training is. And then this part is where the magic happens. This is the latest update and release notes um, for the system. So this is an RSS feed. So it's pulling in all of the blog posts that we do in our um, organization, you guys don't get those notifications every time I update a blog post, 
because I summarize it into this new feed. This is an element that we can add to any email. You can add it to any website as well. And it's called an RSS element and it'll bring in everything that you've posted on your blog site. Now, what this looks like is, I don't know if it's gonna bring in the current. I don't think it brings in the current. I actually will need to send a test. So hold on, let me just, let me do that. Let me send you a test and I'll show you what the email looks like. Yes. Get the RSS speed. And for those who are Travel Pro Suites, you guys get this every Friday. Are you, do you, are you guys getting the emails? Are you getting the Are you getting the insider newsletter? You should be. I think we resumed those uh, this last a couple of weeks ago. I was bound and determined to figure that part out. And I'm just so excited that we did figure this out. All right, so let me just grab the RSS feed so that we can, I can show you what the test looks like. So we've already released, I don't know, three or four blogs this week. And those blogs become the, um, all right, let me copy that into this test URL here. I'll just send that to myself. And so the setup of this is pretty simple. So we keep a generic title because this is going out every week. And then we have, um, this is the preview text and then we have a generic title that's going out. This actually, this right now statement is actually pulling in the date of when the test, when the email goes out so that um, it's the week ending and we send it out every Friday. So it's pulling in the Friday day, which I think is really cool. So again, I don't have to mess with the date, go in and every week I got to go mess with the date. All of that just automatically happens. RSS feeds for you, if you guys are doing, so I, I want you to think of like some really good examples of how you can do this. You could create a blog site that is just like latest deals and automatically set up an email that will automatically send out latest deals, right? If you're getting deals from different so choice suppliers that you're using, you could create a blog post that has the latest deal information and do one for every one of the deals that you wanna showcase for that week, set up an email that automatically pulls in the RSS feed, boom, it sends it out to everybody who subscribed. That's a really great use case for you all. You know, I've done a training on um, building a blog site. One of the other great use cases is doing an FAQ. Like if you've got uh, travel guides, you have a travel guide uh, blog site. And every time you do a new travel guide, you can post it there. And when it goes out, it'll go out to everyone that's on your list. So there's multiple great reasons to create blog sites that you can then create these individual pieces of content, have it automatically send out the content via email and social media posts as well. Because just like we scheduled the um, YouTube RSS feed, we can schedule a blog post RSS feed. So let me show you what the email looks like. So I just got the email and I'm gonna open it up and drag that over here. And so this is the email with the content that I had. You see it brought in my name, also brought in my, my name here because I sent it to myself. And then, you know, this is all standard, but here are all the blogs that we've done between last Friday and today. So all of this is automatically coming in. I didn't have to do anything to structure it. It automatically will bring in everything from the last time I did the RS feed, uh, RSS feed release till now. Do you guys see how powerful that could be in terms of helping to automate your communication, also keeping you engaged, right? So if you do something that is deals, promotions, information to your list, encourage people to share it, share it on your social media page. This is, this is sort of the engine that I'm talking about that you ultimately start to build for yourself where again, it's on all autopilot. I don't have to think about now, like we did this, we started this newsletter at the beginning of the year. I wanna say we started the newsletter last year and it was, it was manual. The process of building this newsletter was very manual. My admin did it. 
you know, she had to check with me to see which events were here, or whatever. And now I don't have to have a conversation with my admin about the newsletter. The structure is there. All I do is every time I do a training, she now has a task to add the post to the blog post. She knows, you know, she knows where to get the image. I give her the descriptions already and she does it and boom, the newsletter is already done. The effort to build our newsletter is, is next to nothing now. That to me is worth its weight in gold alone, just the ability to automate the newsletter delivery. And every one of you all have stuff to say. Um, and if you don't, that's what you should be working on is what should you be saying and communicating to the list of people that you ultimately are going to grow. So we want a smart list of people that have a particular you know, we want to know something about them. Maybe everybody that comes on your list, you want to send a newsletter to. Maybe you do just a special edition just for Bali. Maybe you do a special, we used to do a magazine. We'll probably pick that back up again. But we used to do a magazine once a quarter um, for advisors, right? So again, as much as you can automate the content pulling of the things that you're doing to communicate it out, it starts to build your traffic because people are going to be like, oh, wow, she's got this. Let me share it. And you encourage people to share it. And then the more people are sharing it, the more your list grows, the more people that you have to communicate with. All right. So scheduling the RSS feed is pretty easy as well. So we've got the template. Now what we do is this is the template. And so what I did is the thing that I was in earlier, let me show that to you. Oh, I'm like, oh, where did it go? I guess I, I guess I backed my way out of all of that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you to the show you the setup of the RSS feed. Um, okay, so in the email campaigns, you can create a new. We have a we we created actually a blank. I'm not going to go through all of the steps because we don't have time to go through every one of the steps. But what we ultimately did is, is we created a newsletter campaign, and I'm going to just reschedule this so you can see what the schedule looks like because this is really how you set it up. Is so once we've got the template, the email template, we have it laid out the way we want. We have an image, we have text, we have the RSS feed coming in. Then we schedule it, we pull the RSS feed in, we determine when we want it to go out, we say who it's from, we do the subject line, the subject line is pretty generic, like I mentioned, and then we select our smart list. So our smart list is who the list, who the email is going to go out to. The more you can segment your list and you get it down, like, so let's say you have a big list of 2,000 people, 500 people. All of those people aren't going to open, but if you create content that's specific to a person, they're more likely to open and they're more likely to see. So it, it really, it doesn't matter if it's email, if it's posts, doesn't matter videos. The objective is viewership. The objective is engagement. So the more likely people are to open your thing, they will see the message and do the action that you want. So that's really your goal is to get people like to create segmented pieces of specialized content for groups of people that are likely to engage and do what you want, schedule it, get it on autopilot. I mean, let's say you create a Bali newsletter uh, or destination or the hottest, uh, let, I wouldn't even do it by a particular destination. I would do the hot, like I do a newsletter on the hottest destinations. And then I would periodically either once a month or I, I probably do it weekly. I would post about some destination and I'd probably do a series. <laughs> like I'm not going to tell you probably, that's exactly what I would do. I would do a newsletter on the hottest destinations I would, everybody and my mother, I would invite to get on this newsletter and every week, 
every month I would pick a destination and every week of that month, I would talk about that destination, something I'd have four different topics about that destination I would do. That newsletter would go out to everybody. So every month they'd get a new destination and every month I'd be promoting my group trip associated with that destinations because I'd be picking destinations that I'd have group trips with. Right. But that's all automated. I don't have to send the email. It's all automated because all I have to do is do the post. I can use ChatGPT to help me with the ideas. I can use ChatGPT to help me structure the content um, and develop. I can, you know, if you're into the mid journey and you love prompting, you can use mid journey to help you with the images, right? You can get images from your supplier. That's what I would do to automate the conversation. And then my goal would be to get as many people into this email series because that's where I'm also promoting. I'm giving them valuable content about the hottest destinations and I'm promoting my group trip every month um, in one of those weeks. All the calls to action probably on that is if you wanna go to this hot, hot destination, sign up for our interest form, sign up for our, you know, our promotion that we're having for this month. That's what I would do all day long. All right. Any questions on that? Because this, like, I am totally a geek about this. Like, I love this kind of automation and being able to do that and deliver that to you all and then give you guys really great opportunities and thoughts about using it. All right. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Perfect, Tanya. I'm glad that you're getting them. Yeah, we just resumed it because it, it was laborious. Like, it was laborious for us to create that newsletter um, and... Uh, like, so we stopped, we, I can't remember when we stopped this year. And then when I finally figured it out, when I figured out the, the, the beast that is RSS, I was like, Eureka, we got it. And so now this whole process, we will pretty much have this, probably this whole thing automated uh, soon. I, there's just the, the top part I got to figure out how to do, but super excited about uh, to share this with you guys. All right. I'm going to pause for just a second and ask you, uh, how are you guys feeling about this? How are you guys feeling about using this inside of your travel business as a way to communicate and get, uh, get, get the information out there and then also use it as a way to get people on your list and in your world? Yes, this absolutely would take the place of MailChimp. You don't need an email marketing tool with our tool. We will handle all of your email marketing. We actually... From a communication, so let's let's just kind of go back to the, it's a great question, um, Sugar. And so when we talked about these communication channels um, yesterday, on Monday, all of these communication channels we can handle. We can handle your website, build, you know, we have a place for you to build out your website. We can host your website. We can handle your email marketing, sending uh, marketing campaigns. We can handle email templates. We can handle, we talked yesterday about email snippets. We can um, do individual emails to your clients through the tool. We can handle all of your email needs. What we don't do though, is, is we don't host like your, let's say Sunday at online travel boss. And I want to get email to Gmail, right? That, that is hosted through an email provider and so like we use GoDaddy for our email handling. So you just still need to have that component, but we can send the email out through our dedicated email server. Um, and we set that up for you. We can handle chat bots. We can handle your phone. Like, so if you have a phone, you have a virtual IP phone, let's say you're using Google. A lot of people, I know a lot of advisors who are using um, the free Google phone. Um, and I used it for years too. I used a voice over IP solution phone.com. I think I used for years. I, I tried them all. I was probably one of the first people in my circle who did online phones and we got rid of our physical landline in the early, as soon as it was available. Cause I was on Vonage. I was like one of the, like I, I bought Vonage and all the devices early, bought it for our business. We can, the, the problem with having an external phone system is those conversations, those recordings are disconnected from your CRM system. And so it's not to say that, you know, if you are, you, you, you love your line, you don't want to leave your line, you can, but you still, it's another external conversation that's not in the same place. We have a setting in our system on the phone system that allows you to um, check off 
uh, that you want to record. So any conversation that you have is recorded and available with the contact record. We can do text messages. We can do community. We can integrate with your social media platforms. We can do calendar set scheduling. We don't actually take the place of Zoom or Google Meet, but we integrate with both of those platforms. So when it comes to communication, any communication tool that you are currently using if you want to know if we can do it, we probably can do it and we can host it for you inside of the platform. So we talked about chat widgets yesterday and we set up a chat widget. Um, I always, always like have a hard time saying that together, chat widget, chat widget. Um, we can, uh, we talked about setting up the chat widget. I know we went through it really quickly yesterday. So I'm just going to, again, uh, kind of show you where that is. So under sites, you can go to chat widget. And here we have a couple of chat widgets that are already available. I showed you yesterday also how to, how to make that chat widget available inside of our platform. You just go to the settings of the site and the, the widget will be available in the right hand corner. But the other thing that you can do is let's say you have your website hosted, let's say on Wix or WordPress or some other place, you can click on this get code and this little piece of script code, you can put in the header of your site and then that widget, you will be integrated with the platform. So your chat widget will be on your external site that, you, and it's not an external site, but it, you know, a site that's not hosted by us, but the widget and interaction with our software will be available on your site. So I wanted to show you that part that we can integrate with your existing website without any problem. All right, so you want to, and we went over how to turn it on in the funnel settings. The other thing that we talked about in terms of internal communication and when it comes to traffic, nobody, nobody under the, uh, well, let me, not nobody, everybody loves to go to somebody where other people think that they're great. So as a part of your travel business, one of the things that you need to ensure that you have available in a, in a, in a, in a strategy around is collecting testimonials slash reviews. I think I did a training a couple of weeks ago around this concept. And inside of our tool, we allow the management of your testimonials in a couple of places. So underneath our reputation section, any review that you get from Google My Business, which I think is still a really great place to uh, have because you're going to be on the Google Internet streets. We also take Facebook reviews. So all of you all need to have a Facebook business page. It is to me now the new yellow pages of online. Um, I don't even know. I can't even I can't even tell you the last time I went to um, yellowpages.com. I don't even do they even make Yellow Pages the book anymore? I think when we were in business, we still got an actual physical book. But uh, there's the Yellow Pages online, but I don't use it. I just Google. I Google somebody's information when I'm looking for them and I'm looking for their local listing to come up and I'm looking for their phone number and their website and all of that. And so that is the reason why it's a very compelling reason for you to fight the fight to get a Google listing because it is so valuable. Absent of a Google listing, you need to have at least a Facebook business profile that has your information. And Facebook business also has the ability to leave reviews on it. And we integrate with both of those platforms in terms of seeing the reviews. You can make review requests as a part of your process. Great people. People utilize reviews as a way to determine is this a person I want to do business with? What did other people say? I look at good and bad reviews. So I'm looking at people's bad reviews and seeing what they have to say. Does that persuade me? It does, depending on what they have to say. And oftentimes I'm looking at what the owner has to say in response. Like if someone gets a bad review and the owner hasn't responded, that doesn't sit well with me. I, having had bad reviews online, you know, in our barbershop, um, we responded to every review, good, good or bad. And, you know, I don't ever try and justify why somebody felt the way that they felt, but if they represented a situation inaccurately, I stated our case, 
I acknowledged their problem and I addressed it. And I think that's what people are looking for because nobody's perfect, right? So we're reput managing your reputation. You are an online business. You are a business. Forget, forget that it's online. You're, you're a business and what what is out there about your business is important and reviews are a really important part of that mix so we allow you inside of the system there's no additional cost for the reputation based features integration with uh, google business reviews and facebook business reviews is one of the things that come out of the box now if you're with our premiere option we have the ability to use our video pro feature which allows you to capture video testimonials make a request of a to your clients with video testimonial get them to record a video right there using our software that video then becomes available for you to view and watch without any problem and so we've got both of those again when it comes to traffic people are looking at what other people are saying about you to help them see if they want to do business with you. All of it matters. And so as a business owner, what you want to make sure is that you have all of those channels available to you set up. So we've got, uh, you want to configure your reputation management um, system. And then you want to schedule, um, schedule, you know, I was just talking to a client this week, actually two clients this week, and we were working on their content plans. And one of the things that we were talking about is batch creating content, getting it scheduled so you don't have to think about it, right? I don't want to think about sitting down and doing posts every day. I've done it. I've been there. I don't like it. <laughs> I, I, and something will always come up that will trump it because I just don't like it. I just generally don't like scheduling content. I, I know it's a necessary evil, um, but I, I just, you know, I wish I was a different person, but I'm not. So I'm going to just show you our calendar. Um, our demo account doesn't have our stuff uh, scheduled, but I'm going to show you our planner. And so what we have is all of our social media posts already scheduled. Our videos are already scheduled. We actually, uh, last year, we went through an exercise of, of scheduling all of our holiday posts in advance. So every September and October, we take a look at the holiday schedule for the upcoming year. And my team has until December to get everything scheduled out from January to December of the next year. So these posts are already here. So I can tell you that when we go to, I don't think there's any holiday in August, but when we go to September, we already have all of September. Our, I think our team, they schedule a week out seven. I think they do cycles seven, seven, nine days out. So they prep all the content and they get it all scheduled out. But all of our holidays are pre-scheduled out. Like all I've, I told them which holidays I want. We went through, we have a, a document that goes through all the post content, the captions, the title, the images, my graphic artist, Extraordinaire Jam. She creates all the images for the year and it's all scheduled. Cause I don't know about you, every year I was missing travel advisor day. <laughs> I was like, I'm a travel advisor coach. How the heck am I missing travel advisor day? So I was like, never again, we're not missing travel advisor day. We're not missing any holiday. Like we need to make sure that we celebrate that. So this is something that we do as a batch event. We schedule all the holiday posts for the year and we do it. When it comes to our, now that we've got a pretty much rhythm for our workshops, we'll do the same thing. We'll schedule the workshops, all of the posts that need to go out. The great thing about this is once it's on the schedule, it's here, right? You don't need to mess with it. Like it's already done. Like, so they've got stuff scheduled through. It looks like, wow, they've got stuff scheduled through the, oh, this is all just this week. <laughs> this is all uh, this week. So this is all the stuff that's scheduled. What month is this? I'm all, I'm all impressed. This is July. All right. So this is all the stuff that's scheduled out um, already on the calendar. And this, the reason why there's so much is because we, we post to multiple channels. We Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, we're scheduled, you know, all of our posts are going out everywhere. You know, again, I don't say you need to worry about doing this out the gate, like scheduling to every platform. You need to lock down the asset right now 
What I would focus on is one platform first, get it down, make sure you're comfortable with creating a schedule for you and then add the next platform. If Facebook's the platform you want to be, just take your wallet out. If Instagram is the place that you want to be, just make sure you have a hashtag strategy. If TikTok is where you want to be, make sure you're doing vi videos on a regular basis, right? If it's YouTube, make sure you're doing video content on a regular basis, right? So just understand the platform and understand what you need to do. All right. So we talked about connecting your social media platforms and then scheduling RSS posts. We talked about that as well. The last thing that I'm going to leave you all with is blog posts. Um, and so we talked a little bit about the idea of a blog post, but what I'm going to show you is our blog post um, and kind of how we're using it as a knowledge base. So we're, you know, we've got, uh, we've got our software and this is something that we've just released over the last couple of weeks um, where we have this, I want to say we've done this over the last couple of, uh, maybe it's been a month we've had our um, blog site. Hold on, I can't see. Let me just drag it over here. So what we have is our, our knowledge site, which has all of our information about training on different topics in our software. And so this is where we post all of our replays. This is where we post, you know, different categories of information. What I want you to do is I want you to just sort of stretch a little bit and think about, okay, Sunday's doing software. Her client base is you all travel advisors, but your client base are consumers who want to go to different locations. So imagine this, instead of being, um, you know, categories of software features, these are destinations and you're doing blog interest articles and they don't have to be long. They, you know, we're using this to not just post articles like the traditional blog. We're posting announcements. We're posting little blurbs. We're posting and embedding our YouTube videos inside of our blogs. So this is really the power that you can do here. So this is a, this is, this is the, this is the um, training I did yesterday. And so it's a blog post because we post everything. It's got the video link in here. And then it's got all this sort of text instructions here um, as to what you need to do to build this uh, community. And then what we do is we've got these categories, which are really controlling the navigation. And so you can do the same thing. You can create a blog site on any topic you want in your travel business. And I really, really employ you as you walk away from this week's workshop is communication can happen in so many different forms and fashions. Your goal is to get the word out to as many people as possible and in as many formats that time will allow you to. Do I say that you need to do all these things at one time? Absolutely not. But when you get the foundation of your business set up, right, that's going to be your priority. I was just talking to a client today and I was like, okay, priority one, get the formation of the business done. Once you get the formation, let's get the business process set up. All right. You've got that done. Boom. The next thing I'm going to say is make sure you've got a way to get strangers, like strangers coming into the business. Then once you've got strangers regularly coming into the business, they know who you are. What are you going to talk to them about? How are you going to keep them engaged? And then do you have a promotion cycle? Once you get the sequence of that engine down, you've got a business that's successful, right? Because if you do that well, you, you know, setup is a one-time thing. Operational setup, you'll tweak that every maybe quarter, every year or whatever you do, right? That's doing, it's a well-oiled machine. Now then you're focused on what? Marketing, getting people to know who you are, getting them to fall in love with you, giving them reasons to buy and doing that on autopilot, right? All right. We, if you decide to become a Travel Pro Suite member, I will see you um, on the inside um, at our next training. So with that, have a wonderful day. If you're not a Travel Pro Suite member, simply go to onlinetravelboss.com forward slash TPS. And if you are already a member and you'd like to join our affiliate program, you'll be able to resell Travel Pro Suite and make 30% monthly recurring income. I look forward to working with you. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. The time is now for you to simplify how you operate your travel business. Bye for now. If you have any questions and you'd like to join us for open office hours, 
We're starting right now. Go to sundaygardener.com. Thank you.